Today we are going to talk about voltage dividers. Voltage dividers are a circuit, or circuit snippet if you will, that you find everywhere in electronics and so you need to be intimately familiar with them to move on and understand circuits. So let's go ahead and get started and look at what voltage dividers are. Here is a typical circuit. We'll start out with a battery and we'll make that 10 volts and we'll put two resistors in series. And let's make these two resistors an equal resistance. I'll just choose 1K off the top of my head. And we've already studied Kirchhoff's voltage law, so we know that this 10 volts will be distributed across these two resistors. And one of the rules of series circuits is that if we have equal resistors, we will have equal voltage. So we have 10 volts distributed among two resistors. They must have equal voltage, and those two voltages must add up to 10 volts. So what are we going to have across the two resistors? So equal voltages, they must add up to 10 volts. So that's going to be 5 volts across this resistor and 5 volts across that resistor. So that's just a quick review of how the voltage will be distributed across these two resistors. Now before we move on, I want to simplify things a little bit because when we examine circuits uh, in a complete form like this, they can get rather messy. And so a lot of times when we look at circuits, we uh, eliminate the battery and replace it with some symbols. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to remove the battery from the circuit and replace the positive side of the battery with a terminal that we will simply label as the battery voltage. Actually, the voltage we'll find at that terminal. And just a quick review, if we take our voltmeter and measure in the typical way where we put our negative lead at the or a black lead at the negative side of the battery and our red lead at the positive side, we're going to read positive 10 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and label this as positive 10 volts. And here we will have our ground symbol. I'm using the, uh, tip, the common connection ground here rather than a chassis ground or the true earth ground because that's appropriate in this particular case. So when we see a circuit where there's a circle and a voltage, and then a ground symbol, we know that there is a battery in that circuit supplying it in this way. But we're going to go ahead and erase the battery just to simplify things here. So there is our circuit with the battery eliminated. We have positive 10 volts here. What's the voltage going to be here? Well, we have our black lead there and we measure plus 10 volts here. What are we going to measure here? The voltmeter measures the difference between two voltages. The leads are at the same place, so there is no difference. So, of course, we're going to read zero volts down here. And the way the voltage is distributed is we start with 10 volts, and we're going to lose voltage as we go around the circuit. How much voltage will be left over here? Start with 10, lose 5. And so at this point right here, we will have plus 5 volts. And that is the basics of what a voltage divider does for us. We have a high voltage, and somewhere down in the circuit we have a lower voltage that we can manipulate to make our circuits do what we want to do. We will find voltage dividers such as in biasing transistors, in selecting a voltage from perhaps a Zener diode, which we'll talk about down the road, but a Zener diode is a voltage reference. So let's say we have, just go ahead and talk about it momentarily here. We'll learn a lot more about this later. Here is a Zener diode. And the characteristic of this is when it's properly set up, the voltage will be constant here. So let's say we have plus 15 volts here. And this Zener diode says I am a 6.2 volt Zener diode. It means that there will be 6.2 volts across that diode nominally. We'll talk a lot more about that when we get into solid state devices. But let's say we want some lower voltage than 6.2 volts we can put a voltage divider across that. Just like we have this voltage divider across the battery, this voltage divider is across the Zener diode, and we will have some lower voltage here than the 6.2 volts that we started out with. So that's a couple of places real quickly where we find voltage dividers, and we'll worry about that when we come to the circuits, but here's how we work with them. Now what we are usually doing with a voltage divider is we are 
taking a higher voltage and we want some particular lower voltage. Now, you may know a little bit about transformers and say, well, why don't we use transformers for that? Well, first of all, we're going to talk about those way down the road, but a transformer works differently. For one thing, a transformer will take the same amount of power and power in equals power out. It transfers power through the transformer. Here we lose power in the in the resistors. And also a transformer only works in alternating current. And I don't want to go any deeper into that now, but they are used in a completely different situation where this is where we take a higher voltage and we pick off a lower voltage. We do not transform that into another voltage. And we need to talk about that another time because we don't understand what transformers are doing. But we're going to understand what the voltage divider does. So here's a simple one. We have 10 volts. We want 5 volts. All we have to do is choose two equal resistors and we get half the voltage across one, half the voltage across the other. So start with our voltage. We lose half of it. So here's our voltage here. And down here we have one half of our voltage because these two resistors are equal. So what do we do if we want a different voltage. It's very simple. First of all, remember Kirchhoff's voltage law is we have a certain voltage to begin with and that voltage will be taken up by whatever resistors we have in the circuit and that voltage will be proportional to the ratio of the two resistors. I haven't really talked about that, but let's talk about that now. Here we have a ratio that's one to one and so we have the same voltage across each one. Let's say we want just for making things easy, let's start out with 9 volts here. You'll see why I picked that voltage in just a moment. And let's say we want, at this point here, 3 volts. How do we get that 3 volts? Well, we have 9 volts. We want to lose 6 volts and then have 3 volts left over. So we want to lose twice as much voltage here as we do here. So that's a two to one ratio. So I simply want this resistor to be twice this resistor. And just to make things easy, I'll choose, uh, how about 2K here and 1K there. So I lose two thirds of my voltage and then one third of my voltage, leaving three volts left over. Now, when we choose these resistors, the only thing we have to think about is how much current do I want going through them. And if we are going into a really high impedance circuit over here, such as an operational amplifier, another thing we'll talk about another day, these have a very high impedance. What does that mean? Very little current flows into it. And so I'm not going to have much current flowing this way all of my current's going to flow that way. And so I don't need to provide any current to run this. So I can use very, very high resistors here and have almost no current. So I can, you know, how about, yeah, 100K. And, well, let's go back to my two to one ratio here. How about 200K and 100K? We still have a two to one ratio of resistors. So twice my voltage, twice the voltage here as we have here. So two-thirds of my voltage, one-third of my voltage, I still get, assuming this is a voltage follower, talk about that another day, I'm going to get, get my plus three volts. So how do we calculate other voltages? Once again, it's all about the ratio of the resistors. So let's say I have 10 volts again, and let's say I want two volts left over. How do I do that? Well, I have 10 volts. I'm going to lose eight volts here and two volts here. That's eight to one, which is the same, excuse me, that's eight to two. So that's eight to two, which is the same as four to one. So I simply need to have this resistor four times the voltage of this resistor. And if we have uh, the freedom to pick any resistor we want, that makes that pretty easy. How about let's make this uh, 10K. We need this one to be four times that, so 40K. So we start off with 10 volts. We have 
four times the resistance is here, so we lose four times the voltage. So in this case, we're going to lose four volts and then So we're going to lose four times the voltage here as we do here. So in this case, we start with 10 volts. We're going to lose eight volts and then two volts and have, of course, the plus two volts left over here. Let's do another one just for practice. Pick some voltages here. How about 12 volts? So we have a 12 volt battery out there and let's not make it too easy. Let's say at this point here, we want, how about seven volts? So we need to lose five volts and then seven volts because it's going to be five to seven. And so all we have to do is make sure that we have that ratio of resistors here. That could be very easy. How about 5K? Oops. Get that correct here. How about 7K and 5K? So we will have 7 volts plus 5 volts equals 12 volts. So it's pretty easy if you have the freedom to choose whatever resistors you want to make your voltage divider. Let's take a look at this in a slightly different way that might be helpful. Let's put plus 12 volts here again. And instead of looking at the voltage, let's look at our resistors and figure out what the voltage is from that. So let's say we have 8K here and 4K here. So that's an 8 to 4 ratio, which is the same, you know, 8 to 4, which is the same as a 2 to 1 ratio. Now, a quick trick you can use to figure this out, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. 2 plus 1 equals 3. So that means we have 3 units. So now we divide our voltage by that. 3 goes into 12 4 times. So that tells us what our lower voltage is. So that's going to be 4 volts. And once again, that was a 2 to 1 ratio. So we're going to have twice the voltage up here. 2 to 1, 2 to 1. So that's going to be 8 volts. And that works for no matter what voltage we put up there. Let's put here, oh, uh, we'll just pick a nice even number that we can work with here. How about 18 volts? Okay, we'll use the same numbers here just to make things easy. 8 to 4, which is the same as 2 to 1. 2 plus 1 equals 3. Divide 3 into 18. That goes 6 times. So our lower voltage is 6 volts. And then this one's going to be twice that, so that's 12 volts. So 6 plus 12 equals 18. And of course, our voltage here at the junction of the divider is going to be our lower voltage. So that's just a couple of quick tricks you can use for voltage dividers. So the point to remember is that the most important thing is the ratio of resistors. It's 4K to 8K, so I have 12 volts here, 6 volts there, 2 to 1 ratio. What if this is, oh, 16.2K and this is 8.1K? What's that going to do for us? it's still a 2 to 1 ratio. So that's 16.2 to 8.1, it's 2 to 1 ratio. 2 plus 1 is, is going to be th uh, 3. So we divide that by 3 to get 6. That's going to be our lower voltage. Multiply it by 2 because it's a 2 to 1 ratio of resistors. Gets us all the way back up to our 18 volts and there's our 6 volts there. So that's the basics of voltage dividers. I could spend a lot more time on this but we are going to spend a lot more time on this. We're going to be doing voltage dividers until the cows come home because in circuits over and over again, as we practice our Kirchhoff's Law and our series circuits and all the things we need to know, we're going to do voltage dividers over and over again. And this is just a quick overview to get us ready to do that. One thing I need to point out though, when we get into AC circuits, something funny happens. A while before we get there, but there's another component called a capacitor which acts backwards because of the nature of this particular device. Let's make our voltage here. Now this is going to be an alternating current because that's the way it works. But let's say this is 10 microfarads 
and this is 5 microfarads. That's a 2 to 1 ratio. So let's put some voltage here. Let's, so let's make this 9 volts. So that's going to give us a 2 to 1 ratio. So that's going to be 3 volts here and 6 volts here, right? Wrong, because capacitors under alternating current, the amount of impedance is not is actually inversely proportional to the number of microfarads. We'll talk about how that works in alternating current. There's a formula for it, and we're not going to talk about that now. But since the actual impedance, or the capacitive reactance, which is the name of the type of impedance we have there, is inversely proportional to the capacitance, that means that our voltages are swapped. So when we are in alternating current and we have a voltage divider made of capacitors instead of resistors, we'll find that we get our lower voltage across the bigger capacitor, unlike the resistor. So in resistors, bigger resistance means bigger voltage. In capacitors, it's backwards because the actual capacitive reactance or the type of impedance we get is inversely proportional to the capacitance. So this one has the lower impedance, this one has the higher impedance, and so we get the voltage is reversed. So just remember that. It's a quick trick if you come across this, that when it's capacitors, things are reversed. Before we move on, let's just see what happens if we have more than two resistors. So let's make our voltage up here, and let's have three resistors now. And make it a nice easy number to work with. How about plus 18 volts? And let's say we have here uh, about 10k Let's make this one 5K, and let's make this one 3K. So how is the voltage distributed now with three resistors? Well, back to our Kirchhoff's voltage law, we know that the, the voltage is going to be distributed across the three resistors, and it will be proportional to the resistance, higher, lower, and even lower. But I picked these numbers because, guess what, they add up to 18K. So what's going to happen? 10 volts, 5 volts, 3 volts. And so what's the voltage going to be at the top is 18 volts. What's the voltage going to be right there? Well, we start with 18, and we have a 10 to 5 to 3 ratio. So we're going to lose 10 volts here. So that's going to leave us with 8 volts left over. Then we're going to lose 5 volts. And actually, we look at it this way, we start with 0 and we add 3. And so there is, of course, at the bottom we have 0. And so we have our voltages distributed that way if we have more than two resistors. So once again, we're going to spend lots of time dealing with resistors in series and how voltage dividers work. But this is a quick overview in two voltage dividers. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.